First question comes from Luca. Your thoughts on DAO software? I've been recently testing out Aragon, and yesterday I met the wet onomy guys. They all seem to bear great promise. When I think of what this can become in five to ten years, it blows my mind. They appear to be early stage, so it's probably too early to use their software. Do you know of other similar projects? What's your general view on DAO software? I'm honestly not that up to date on the various software projects out there. Um, I do know Aragon is a governance project for running DAOs, uh, and I know that a bunch of other projects are using it in order to build governance into their own applications. And this is one of the interesting things that's happening in Ethereum, which is the maturation of these composable services, where people are building special purpose single focus smart contracts to deliver a single service and then those can be composed by other smart contracts into more complex services so for example um, there's um, stable coins that are decentralized and backed by uh, a reserve of ether there's governance projects like aragon there's reputation uh, projects, there's identity projects, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and a lot of Ethereum projects are now creating these composable applications where they they put together the best of breed of each one of these categories in order to build a new application. I'm very excited about DAO software, and I think I've said this quite a few times before. Um, to me, governance and the DAO, if you like, or uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, this concept of building organizations that are governed by the members or that have a degree of autonomy based on the rules in the smart contract or some mixture of autonomy and governance, um, I think this is the killer app for Ethereum. I think I've always thought that Ethereum uh, primarily enables these um, rich governance applications. Now, it, it may produce other things too, but um, you know, a lot of the talk in Ethereum today is about decentralized finance. But if you look closely, I think a lot of the decentralized finance projects are more about governance than anything else. They're financial instruments built with decentralized governance. So, very interesting stuff. Um, the concept of a decentralized autonomous organization or any kind of decentralized organization ad hoc or um, uh, special purpose, project-based uh, collections of people who work together, or uh, systems of software that set governance rules. All of these are fascinating topics. They're not mature yet, and that's one of the big caveats. You've got to recognize that in a fast-moving space, a lot of these projects are still experimenting. But you know that's the interesting thing about this space. There's a lot of experimentation going on, and we learn a lot from each one of these experiments. So I'm I'm trying to follow these as closely as possible, and uh, learn as much as possible about these projects. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more. Kevin asks, Hi Andreas, what do you see as the biggest obstacles for DAOs, distributed or sorry, decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, right now. I'm particularly interested in solutions to the civil attack problem. To me, it seems like a practical solution to that problem will open the door to a lot of really interesting concepts like on-chain elections and universal basic income. Do you agree with the importance of this issue, and what other issues should new DAOs be focusing on? Great question. So, the Sybil attack problem, which you can actually read up on by reading uh, Sybil uh, on Wikipedia, and it's spelled S Y B I L. The Sybil attack problem is a problem uh, understood in distributed systems that predates Bitcoin, and it is the fact that um, you can create an unlimited number of fake virtual computers online. So any kind of mechanism of truth or voting or um, uh, any any kind of mechanism where you're using uh, some form of identity to count something or distribute something can be easily gamed. Where one person can create a thousand, a hundred thousand, a million um, fake nodes or fake IDs or fake avatars or fake Twitter accounts or fake whatever and and then 
basically break the distributed system. So let's say, for example, you're doing on-chain elections. Well, if I can create um, thousands of voting identities, uh, and you can't have any way of verifying those voting identities, then I can vote a thousand times. Universal basic income, if I create lots of fake people, I can get paid universal basic income lots of times. Um, within decentralized systems like consensus, the reason we have proof of work is because proof of work is a direct solution to Sybil problems, which is how do you know the miners are real? How do you know someone's actually put any effort into mining? And the way you know is because there is proof of the work they did in every block. So um, that means you get the one CPU, one vote, or in this case, one ASIC, one vote, and that solves the Sybil attack problem because you can't spin up a miner uh, without proof of work, and therefore you can't create fake mining. Uh, your mining has to be real because it has to contain this proof of work. So civil attacks are a big problem. They're a big problem in a number of distributed systems, and so far one of the best. Uh, there, there, there's basically two ways to solve that. One is centralized. So I mentioned previously elections or universal basic income. How do we solve civil attacks in things like social security systems or welfare systems or elections? We solve those problems very poorly through centralized identity verification mechanisms like providing a national ID or dipping your finger in uh, indelible ink or um, um, some kind of uh, biometric or something like that. All of these are flawed systems um, because you know, with biometrics, the biometrics have to be checked against the database, and that database can have uh, multiple fabricated entries in it. You could have um, with identity. You you know, if you compromise um, the identity mechanism, then you can create fake people. You can you can have dead people who are apparently alive and voting freely, as the joke goes in in some parts of the world where. Uh, every year, the number of people who vote far exceeds the number of people who are actually alive in the country. Um, you can do all kinds of things. So even these centralized solutions, which are very costly to maintain, uh, are subject to civil attacks. And of course, with decentralized solutions, it's even worse. If you don't, if you can't see the other person, um, if you can't have any form of uh, uh, verification and you don't want to use a centralized solution, then this problem becomes very, very difficult. I can spin up thousands of nodes on cloud servers to pretend to be doing things. Um, you know, if you want to do a vote or a poll or a survey on Twitter, or you want to troll people, um, it's very easy to spin up thousands of accounts and then vote thousands of times and skew the, the outcome of any survey, poll, voting mechanism, or something like that. So that's one problem with the DAOs. Now, so how do you solve the Sybil attack? Interestingly enough, one way you solve it is proof of work. Um, so theoretically, at least, you could have DAOs where, in order to participate in the DAO, you would have to submit proof of work. I imagine um, basically an autonomous organization that's based on a decentralized system, some kind of network. Um, that is used to do some kind of function, let's say payments. And in order to participate in this decentralized autonomous organization, you have to demonstrate proof of work through mining. Wait, I just described Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin is a DAO. So once you realize that Bitcoin is the DAO that solved the, the Sybil attack through proof of work, this all suddenly makes sense. We don't have other solutions for Sybil attacks. Um, one other proposed solution is to use proof of stake. So if you put real money up, uh, then um, it's difficult to fake having multiple participants, but at the same time, then it means one dollar one vote. And one dollar one vote uh, is a system we used to have. It's called aristocracy, uh, and it's it's not a very good system. In fact, it would go even worse. It would become a, a full-on plutocracy. Um, and so. Again, this is a difficult problem to solve. I think an equally difficult problem to solve with DAOs is the Oracle problem, which you might find interesting. And the Oracle problem is the fact that a lot of the most useful things you want to do require you to get information from outside the chain. And then how do you verify that that information is correct? And how do you make sure that 
incorrect information can't be injected into the DAO. Uh, that's a very difficult problem to solve. And of course, you know, the, the kinds of platforms that are experimenting with this are extremely interesting. It's one of the reasons why I'm interested in Ethereum, is because it provides a platform for experimenting on exactly these questions and trying to find solutions on these questions. Um, that is happening at scale with real money at stake um, and adversarial conditions. That is not really happening on any other chain.